welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about burnout, otherwise known as adrenal fatigue. So we're going to be talking about the subject and some of our steps to overcome it. So before we get started, we want to dive into what is burnout mm. or adrenal fatigue as it's commonly called in the alternative health community. So the easiest way to put it is burnout happens when our body becomes weakened from repeated exposure to stress in our environment. And we're not talking about stress that happens in an acute situation such as maybe walking out into the street and then seeing a car coming and you have to jump back. It's more, you know, just life stresses that can build up so perhaps like you don't enjoy your job or you're in a relationship that stresses you out or you just have a lot of responsibilities. So a lot of us can relate to that feeling of just like overwhelm and mm, being constantly triggered. Chronic niggling stress that mm. is all throughout the day. So, you know, we often call this kind of burnout stage where we're feeling so depleted and fatigued as adrenal fatigue. Mm. And we thought we'd raise the point that adrenal fatigue is probably not the most accurate description of this condition. Mm. The current research doesn't really support the model of adrenal fatigue or our adrenal glands becoming overworked. The more correct term, like if you wanted to look at this in PubMed mm. or something like that, would be HPA axis dysregulation. So that is our, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So basically mm. that's our stress response system. So if you wanted to look it up, those are the words that you would use. Yeah, so you would type in HPA axis. So it's this stress response system that basically when stress comes into our life, it becomes triggered and we have our fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. Now over time, if that fight or flight response keeps getting triggered, it really wears at our natural resilience. So our organs, our tissues and our cells, they become really fatigued in a way. Like it's like a elastic band that you keep pulling in and out, in and out. And after like chronic stress, so years of stress, mm. it's not bouncing back the way that it used to. Mm. So your body becomes compromised on like a whole array of different levels. So it's argued that the name adrenal fatigue probably Isn't focuses too much on the adrenal glands when what we have is a imbalance in our whole stress mm -hmm. system. And that comes about simply because our bodies are not evolved to deal with so much stress. Well, you can think if we go back in time, you know, your stresses might have been, you're getting chased by a tiger is the classic example. It's that really acute level stress where your body's gonna signal that response to help you get away. But we're not really built for this type of lifestyle where, you know, in the morning you're stressed because you've got to get your kids to school, then you have to drive in traffic. Mm -hmm. It's this low grade stress mm -hmm. that's just constant throughout our entire day that's yeah. really causing this problem. And our body doesn't really think that far ahead, you know, it just thinks mm -hmm. how I get through like this, this moment, this moment. So even if it puts some extra strain, you know, that whole HPA axis, like the cascade of neurotransmitters mm -hmm. of our stress hormones as well that is created you know it puts a burden on our organs and things but the body just wants to get through like that acute moment but nowadays the acute moments is one after the other mm -hmm. and we really wear ourselves down so you know some of the really common symptoms of uh, we'll call it burnout to keep it simple is of course extreme fatigue we can get low blood pressure so feeling dizzy when we stand mm -hmm. i think low libido is low, low libido. libido so if yeah if it's just totally gone <laughs> or very low stress often plays a big role in that mm -hmm. other ones would be you know you can't get out of bed in the morning but then at night time you've got like a second wind where you can't mm -hmm. go to sleep and, and that's because all... like your whole cortisol rhythm mm -hmm. has gone off kilter and then there's all different grades of adrenal fatigue so you might find that you're at a stage just where it's hard to go to sleep or you might find that you're at that stage where you're just totally fatigued you can't do anything there's mm -hmm. people that just can't get out of bed mm -hmm. and we also mentioned that there is quite a more detailed blog post on this mm -hmm. subject on our blog so if you want to have uh, deep dive and read about all these tips and HPA axis dysregulation, adrenal fatigue. Just head to the link that we'll leave below. Mm. So with that being said, we hope that all makes sense. We're going to jump into some steps to overcome that burnout state. So if you think that when you are burnt out, your resilience is just down and you're overstressed. So all of these tips are about rebuilding that natural mm. resilience and also limiting additional stresses that are coming into your life. Mm and hopefully not triggering that response mm. over and over quite so much. 
So our first tip is to start addressing your emotional stress. So it might surprise you, but our emotions actually have a very real physical effect on our body. So things like anger, sadness, they're not just things that we're thinking in our head, they're actually triggering a reaction where we're getting those stress hormones flooding through our body mm -hmm. and it's contributing to this HPA axis dysregulation. Yeah, so I used to really believe that I could just feel like angry and hold grudges and do all these things and that it wouldn't affect me physically. But I think especially when I had eczema and my gut was really bad, I noticed just how much my stressful emotions were really impacting my physical health because that feedback with the rashes was so It's like you instant. can have a very stressful day and then see you can it, see it straight away. Result. Yeah, and the interesting thing is that, you know, it's not so much about blocking your emotions, mm -hmm. it's not about that, but, you know, what's interesting is that the perceived level of stress mm. is the so, stress that your body that's um, another thing, yeah, because experiences. from the outside maybe someone thinks, oh, you don't have a stressful life, but from the inside, how are you thinking about that and how are you feeling about that? Mm. Maybe compared to another person, you don't have a stressful life, mm. but the way that you interpret and perceive it, mm. you know. So like two people could be in a situation and one has like a very high level of perceived mm. stress and like their mental chatter and everything is causing this cascade, whereas the other person doesn't experience this to be very stressful at all because of the way they that think, perhaps yeah. they think about it and they perceive the situation. So, you know, to the extent possible, we want to try and, you know, reframe situations as well mm. as we can, you know, let go of things that are no good for anyone, like grudges, anger that's just been held on to mm. for too long, that's so destructive for our health. Obviously there are mindfulness based practices you can do as well like meditation, mm -hmm. journaling, there's also a method called mindfulness based stress reduction which we've linked in the blog post. So our second tip is to address hidden stresses. So we've talked about emotional stress and it can be quite easy to identify perhaps thought patterns or situations that might be causing you some emotional distress. But there are also things that are not so obvious that are perhaps internal stresses which also actually trigger that cascade of hormones. So these could be things like inflammation in the gut, autoimmune diseases or conditions, and then things like even blood sugar that's spiking and dropping. Mm. So irregular blood sugar. So the thing is, even if we are managing our emotional lives really well, these sources of stress can really be derailing our progress. So yeah, you could be like this complete zen, mm. like on holiday, enjoying mm. life without any financial stresses, but if you have some really major or any level really of like mm. inflammation in the gut, for example, it's taking the real toll and especially if this continues for years, it's mm. like just wearing you down on that resilience of your body. And you can get to a burnout state, I think purely just from some of these hidden stresses. Yeah. So I know for me personally I believe that I became very fatigued after really years of having problems with my gut but I didn't realize that I had it at all. Mm. It only really became clear to me once my skin went crazy but you could argue that it was probably years before that that there was That's an imbalance and an ongoing stressor from my gut so it's really important to get to the bottom of any suspected hidden stresses and if you have an autoimmune condition and you know that that's a problem for you, it's really important to address that and try and calm inflammation as much as possible. Mm. So our third tip is to opt for gentle exercise. So a lot of us don't realize as well that over-exercising is a big stressor on the body. So people that are going to boot camps, people that are working out CrossFit. excessively throughout the week, yeah, CrossFit as well. It can put you in yeah, some danger of either developing burnout or not recovering from burnout. So I mean, it's not to say some of these vigorous exercises are bad, but oh, yeah. you can quickly get to a place where you want to do it like six times a week. Mm. And it's producing a lot of cortisol and stress hormones to get through that workout. So the thing about not being able to do those really vigorous exercises is that it can be totally frustrating and kind of deflating not to do you know, what you've been able to do in the past because it can be really motivating and fun to like, you know, get out there and flip tires and yeah. do gymnastics. But when you're in a state of burnout, you really have to dial it back. And I mean, you just have to appreciate what your body is capable of 
now and what it can do today if you're ever going to really appreciate what it can become once you've healed. So on the other hand, you definitely don't want to dial it back to the point where you're just doing no exercise mm -hmm. at all because in fact being completely sedentary is a form of stress on our body as well. You know, we're built to move and we need to keep moving. But you're going to want to focus on some more gentle exercises. So that can be just walking, doing some relaxing, like restorative yoga. Even things like Tai Chi are great because it also blends in that yeah. kind of mindfulness element. So the thing is, we just don't want to be tempted to go harder and harder because it can be tempting. Mm. You know, when you get into a workout routine and you just want to go again and again and again the next day. Well, the thing is, it's like as your strength returns, the real temptation is to be like, yeah, I can do that now. Mm. And then before you know it, you're like back back where you started. So and that's not to say that you'll never get to that stage where you can do all those things again. We're aiming to rebuild ourselves back to that stage eventually, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Mm. And it's like super easy to do that. Like mm. I think with any kind of healing, any condition, you know, you're able to eat a few more foods without reactions and then you just go to town. <laughs> like you want to get Keep there too limits. quickly and uh, it can you know really set you back so take it nice and easy and don't overdo it so our fourth tip is about prioritizing fun and social connection so a lot of us these days you know everything's a bit serious mm. you know we don't get to do all the things that we want to do maybe when we were kids and we really prioritized fun as you know the number like one play yeah hanging out with our friends so we really want to get back to those activities that you truly enjoy and that you kind of get lost in because you're having a good time so you know that might be taking up a hobby or like meeting up with people who have similar interests to you or just spending more time with the people that are really close to you mm. and that you can be totally comfortable with and that you know understand how you're feeling and mm. it really goes a long way to have you know, people around you that you can share with and that support you. And it's really just part of our like DNA mm. to play and to interact and do all these things. And I think even, you know, these days it can feel a bit guilty to prioritize fun and to prioritize mm. socializing because we're very focused on productivity. Yeah, definitely. Mm. But it's really important, especially if you're healing from burnout, to do these things and we thought we'd also mention that if you're introverted this certainly doesn't mean that you know you need to be mm. going to like big parties or mm. big groups of people this could be like as simple as connecting with a partner or even an online community of people so we've mentioned before that we have a private facebook group and that's where we connect with hundreds of other women that are going through similar things or in the same health journey and we can all just connect and have fun together so if you're looking for people to connect with, definitely join us there. We love meeting new people and chatting in that group every day. So we'll leave the link to that below, but otherwise you can search for Cultivate Health and Beauty Community. So our fifth tip for overcoming burnout is to eat nutritious meals and to eat them regularly. So if you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that we strongly believe that what we eat really matters for our health and it matters so much maybe more or it's just very very important when we have burnout so we want to focus on foods that really build up the body and avoid foods that are going to cause more stress and more inflammation so you'll also know that we advocate for you know an ancestral or paleo style of eating so the foods that we would include would be plenty of vegetables good quality animal products so grass-fed ethically raised animal products traditional fats and then also our whole fruits. And it may also be worth looking into whether you're getting enough sodium in your diet because a lot of us with burnout are dealing with you know, dizzy spells or feelings of low blood pressure and upping your sodium can definitely help and it really supports adrenal function. Of course, if you're on the other side of the scale and you have more normal to high blood pressure, it may be better to work with a functional medicine practitioner or your doctor to see if that would be right for you. But sticking to those really nourishing whole foods to get your good micronutrients mm. and of course healthy macronutrients to rebuild and restore. So when you're healing from burnout it's also just as important to steer clear of all of those inflammatory foods. So you'll really want to avoid things like wheat and processed flours, processed foods, refined sugar, 
GMO foods, GMOs. like your corn and soy products, seed oils, mm, definitely seed oils, top of that list. It's really important, like just as important as including all the healthful foods. Mm. It's almost more important mm. to avoid those inflammatory foods because they'll be like just knocking you back mm. every and that time. that comes back to that step two where we've got that hidden inflammation going on in our gut when we keep feeding ourselves things that are inflammatory. And the other point that we wanted to make here is that eating regularly is also really important. So when we have burnout, it can be exacerbated by having infrequent meals because when our blood sugar drops too low, it also triggers that stress response for our adrenals to produce more cortisol. Mm. So we want to skip on things like intermittent fasting when we're dealing with burnout and really focus on eating regularly so we don't get into that low blood sugar state. So our sixth tip is about diet as well. And that is that during this period when you're trying to heal from burnout, you might want to look at increasing your carbohydrates. When we talk about increasing our carbohydrates, we're not talking about refined carbohydrates. We're talking about good whole food carbs. So, you know, things like sweet potatoes, potatoes, fruit, all that good stuff. So, you know, a lot of refined carbohydrates can really put us on that blood sugar roller coaster, which we really want to avoid because that stimulates our HPA axis again. So during this time, you may want to bump your carbs up to at least a moderate level of carbohydrate consumption. So that would be around 30% if you're following a sort of paleo template. If you're eating like 2000-ish mm. calories, not that we count calories strictly, but if you're on around 2,000 calories, that would look like 150 grams of carbs. Mm. So you could be anywhere between like 20 and 30%. So we're not talking about like a super high carb diet. Like that's mm. definitely a lot lower carb than a standard Western diet. But then again, but it's, it's, good it's to... still higher than what many of us do when we're not calorie. consciously trying to eat more carbohydrate. Because mm. it can be so easy on this diet to fall a little too low. But it could be adding some more stress and adding to your feelings of fatigue. So definitely try bumping those carbs up. Mm. So tip number seven is about getting plenty of sleep and creating an evening routine. So we all know that when we go to sleep, that's our time when we're really restoring and our body is doing all of that good repair. But when we have this HPA axis dysregulation, we often have troubles with sleeping. So that's because our cortisol isn't following its natural diurnal rhythm. So it's usually peaking in the morning, dropping at night. We get this thing where, you know, cortisol may be higher at night, so we can't go to sleep. And then it's not peaking in the morning, which would normally wake you up. Mm. So when that doesn't happen, it feels like you just can't get out of bed. Mm. So in a natural way, instead of things like sleeping pills, to get your sleep you know, a bit more on track is to create an evening routine that really mm. prepares you for sleep and you know, sends that signal to your body that it's time you know, for the nervous system to really relax. Yeah. We went into this in more detail actually in a recent video and blog post and we can leave that below. It's our evening routine tips, mm -hmm. but they can really help to actually get your sleep back on track because it's really hard to heal from burnout if you're not sleeping. Mm. So tip number eight is about eliminating coffee or decreasing your caffeine intake. So we did speak about this a bit in our video about coffee, but we all know that caffeine really stimulates our adrenals to secrete more cortisol and stress hormones. So when you're in a state where your cortisol is dysregulated and you're suffering from, you know, overstress basically. Yeah. yeah. We want to really pull back on the amount of caffeine that we're taking in. Or at the very least, we should stop drinking coffee around, you know, 2 to 3 p.m. Mm. so that you have time to actually have your cortisol mm. drop. <laughs> See, a lot of us are addicted to having like that coffee like mm. in the evening. And this can be really actually tempting when you're suffering from burnout to, you know, bring your energy back up by constantly having coffee. But it's kind of like... It keeps the cycle going, yeah. doesn't it? So we want to yeah, cut back on our caffeine intake. So that means coffee, but it also means like some of your mm. teas, like green tea and black tea are also really high in caffeine. So you want to drop it either completely if you're in like quite a bad state or you could go to like one a day. Mm. preferably as we said in the morning but some good alternatives are herbal teas so they're yeah. naturally free of caffeine mm -hmm. and a really good one for adrenal fatigue in particular is licorice tea so licorice is known to help potentiate cortisol so it stops it from breaking down so quickly so that we have a higher level of cortisol in our system 
without like actually stimulating mm. more production, which can be really beneficial when we're suffering from that low cortisol. Mm. So tip number nine is to take some adaptogenic herbs. So adaptogenic herbs or adaptogens as they're called are basically a group of herbs that help our body to modulate its response to stress. Mm -hmm. So they kind of work in a very broad way, like they work mm -hmm. on a number of different organs and systems to yeah, change the way that our body adapts to stress mm -hmm. and it kind of works with the situation if that that's makes sense. The, that's the really interesting part though, because these herbs not only will you know bring it up, but they can bring it down. They pretty much that's the word they modulate mm -hmm. the way and adapt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So they help your body with that adaptation to stress. You know, adaptogens have been used in like Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. And it's really interesting because the current studies that are coming through actually support what we've known about these herbs for, you know, hundreds of years. Some of the really popular ones for stress and HPA axis issues are like ashwagandha, Liberian ginseng and rhodiola. So you can often pick up a nice blend of these herbs in a capsule. Mm. and that will give you like a good mix and in the right dose. Mm. And if you're not sure what to take, I would definitely recommend working with a herbalist or someone that really understands the herbs, especially if you're on other medications mm. and things like that, you really mm. want to, you know. Yeah, and even depending on like your specific mm. symptoms, they can be different. The herbs, the herbs are, are such different. like nuanced things where, you know, your engine saying might be better for one person, but mm. within you know, might be better for you. Mm. So if you're still with us, we're up to our 10th and final tip, and that is to incorporate some supplements. So we're going to name just a couple of key nutrients that you can either, you know, try a bit harder to obtain from your diet, or you could opt to, you know, pick up some supplements and give those a little bit of a boost. So the first one is vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is a potent antioxidant, helps with that oxidative damage or to reduce oxidative damage when we're experiencing stress. It also is very supportive to the adrenals. So our adrenals are using vitamin C for the production of stress hormones. So you may want to eat more fruit and veg or look at a vitamin C supplement. And that's the thing about vitamin C as well. It's not really something that I ever see as dangerous to take. Mm -hmm. If you overdose on vitamin C, you'll get like a very bit. yellow week. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bit of diarrhea. It'll be like, that's your max dose, but it's very hard to overdo it really on vitamin C. And our second nutrient to look at is your B vitamins and in particular B5. So in the same way, they're gonna really help with the stress response and supporting your adrenals in the production of stress hormones and really just helping to restore that HPA axis. So a couple of foods that are really rich in B vitamins would be liver and you have even things like avocados and your cold water oily fish like salmon and sardines. But you can also pick up a good supplement and have a go with that. So those are our top 10 tips for recovering from burnout or adrenal fatigue or HPA axis <laughs> dysregulation. <laughs> so again, if you want the full article that goes into a bit more detail, definitely head over to our blog, which we'll link that full article below. And if you're currently struggling with this at the moment, definitely head on over to our Facebook community. We'd love to see you over there. We've got a big group of women that are all supporting each other and quite a few people that are suffering from adrenal issues or yeah. burnout as well. Also feel free to leave us a comment if you have any questions after watching this video. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it with a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye guys.